Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, You are worthy, Lord. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise in this place tonight, Lord. And Father, Lord, we just lift you up tonight, Father. We lift you up. Oh, Rabbi, through. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this season. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're still doing, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for preparing our minds. Father, for shifting our hearts, Lord. Father, for giving, getting us ready, Lord, for what is to come. Father, Lord, we just thank you for finalizing every matter, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we glorify your name tonight, Lord. We glorify your name tonight, Lord. We glorify we say hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, yes, it is. She can not get a lot of us. So, you can not get a lot of us. Set a lot of us. See, and Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for where you've taken us from, Lord. Father, we thank you right now, Father, for what you've given us, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord, that is true. Father, we thank you right now, Father, for the weapons that you've given us, Lord. Father, the weapons of warfare, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word that says in your word you say, Father, you make our hands and our fingertips ready for war. And Lord, we just thank you tonight, Lord. And Father, we just gird ourselves up. Oh, Rabbi, say, Father, we put on the helmet of salvation. Father, we put on the breastplates of righteousness, Lord. We gird our loins right now with the belt of truth. Oh, Rabbi Sekek, we shut our feet with the preparation of gospel of peace, Lord. Father, Lord, we put on the shield of faith, which quenches every fiery dart of the enemy, Lord. And Father, Lord, we take on the sword of the spirit, which is your word. And Father, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, Lord, that you've given us power to trample over every power of the enemy, Lord Jesus. And Father, Lord, right now, we exercise that power. And Father, we take dominion, Lord, over everything that you've given us, Lord. Father, Lord, we take dominion, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We 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 thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Father, we thank you right, for right now, Lord, for just touching us, Lord. We thank you for moving by your spirit in this place, Lord. And Father, Lord, we just thank you for having your way tonight, Father. Have your way tonight, Lord. Have your way. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. People, come on, clap your hands. All you people, clap your hands. All you people, clap your hands. All you people, give a shout unto the Lord. Give a shout. Yeah. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, oh, we come humbly before you, oh God. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are so, so very grateful. And we come to bless your name in corporate worship and corporate praise, oh God. That we all, Father, would be on one accord, the same mind and the same spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask you to touch the minds of your people, touch their bodies, touch their spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you for a fresh anointing this evening to fall in here like never before. Fall down on the Father, we can't do nothing without your anointing. Oh God, your anointing is a yoke destroying power of God. 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 Yoke destroying. We can't do it without your anointing, God. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you. Have your way and thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in here on tonight. Set your people free as you already have done. Father, strengthen them in their inner man by your spirit. Thank you for raising this ministry up, oh God. Bless it, increase it, oh God. In the knowledge of your will and your divine plan and your purpose, oh God. Heal, deliver, and set free, oh God, on tonight. We receive everything that you have for us. Give God a shout. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be you lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Oh, who is this king? The Lord God strong and mighty. Oh, Korea Makashamaya. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, Korea Masakaya. Hey, Korea, da, 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 oh, Koshama. Hey, Korea, da, da, Shamaya. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. One more time, Lord. We come to say thank you. We come to lift up the name. The name that's above every name. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you. We worship we praise you because you're a holy God. 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 And we thank you. 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you're yet going to do, Father. Oh, God bless this house. And, Lord, let your spirit rise as never before. Holy Ghost, have your way. And, Father, we'll be ever so grateful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh God, we give you all glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we see you as mighty. We see you as strong. The gates of hell have not prevailed. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless you. We 
praise you, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that you're a man to war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. New time, new season. It's a place we've never been. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless your name. We praise your name, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the latter rain, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the fresh wind and the healing in the place. Hallelujah. We thank you for the deliverance, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the open heaven. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for all you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we come with a ready praise and an open praise. Hallelujah. Praise waits on. We're marching, we're moving, we're marching, we're moving, we're marching, we're moving new season. We're marching, we're moving, we're marching, we're moving, we're marching, we're moving new season. We're marching, we're moving, we're marching, we're moving, we're marching. We're moving new season. Hallelujah. We're marching. We're moving. We're marching. We're moving. We're marching. We're moving new season. We're advancing. We're advancing. We're advancing. We're pressing. We're advancing. We're advancing new season. We're advancing. We're advancing. We're advancing. We're pressing. We're pressing. We're pressing new season. We're pressing, hey. we're pressing. Oh, na 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 ma sha na 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 ba ba sha ne. We're pressing, oh ma ma sha ne. Hallelujah. We're pressing, we're pressing. Oh, na 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 ma sha ne. We're pressing, we're pressing new season. Hallelujah. Now where are the people that all things have passed away? And behold. And have walked into their new season. Where are you? Come on. I want you on the altar. Come on. God is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of adoration. For the things that stood before you in previous seasons, you shall see no more. For it's a new season. New season, new season, new season, new season, new season, new day. New season, new season, new season, new season, new season, new season, new day. New season, new season, new season, new season, new season, new season, new day. New season, new season, new season, new day. Oh, da da ma shed, da 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 ba ba shan. Hallelujah. Hey, da 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 da. Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! 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 H
room with the sound of heaven. turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no None like you. Say, our God's greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. Oh, you are higher. You are higher than any other. Our God is healer. darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you water you turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. You are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Our God. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? You say it. And if our God, oh shit, oh boy, cosign. And if our God.
to shift this atmosphere come on let's go together let's go up together i say let the glory of the rise of our cosa let the glory of the lord let it rise among us oh, so cool. hallelujah hallelujah are you ready are you ready for the glory oh,
Pick them up. You got a condition in your body. Oh, somebody.
holy hands You can bring whatever you have Hallelujah I just want to give God glory for one moment. Hallelujah. Over these 21 days of prayer, I had many petitions, not for myself, but for others. And I saw God answer every last one of my petitions. Over these 21 days, Hallelujah. After a breaking that many of you went through, a shaking and a shifting, and I watched so many come through. Hallelujah. I give God the glory for this season. Hallelujah. And I want, where's Elder Janae? Here's Shemaka. in the bathroom if God done something for you you want to give God glory over these 21 days I want you to come to them to get the mic here's Shalai many people come on Gail let us start off shut up I want you to testify Janae seat and I began to wonder what God was doing but I didn't worry about it I just trusted him and during these 21 days I began to look at myself I began to hear some things going on in my mind the enemy wanted to try to trick me he wanted to take me out of the church a lot of things was going on, but I remember the word of God that was spoken ahead of time. I was already prepared for it. When the enemy came, I didn't stay on it. I didn't keep it on my mind. When it came, I dismissed it because we were already prepared for the enemy, how he would come and attack our minds and how we will begin to imagine things and how we will begin to see things. And this is what was going on with me. But through it all, I learned how to control my mind. Hallelujah. How to control my thoughts. Hallelujah. It might not be important to you, but it's important to me on how to control what I think. Because how I controls on where I'm going and what I'm going to be doing so now my mind is on the Lord no more tricks from the enemy no more imaginations in my mind of things that he was allowing me to see and the thing about it is when the 21 days was just about over those things that he showed me the enemy showed me, God showed me, they wasn't even true. It wasn't even true. But I thank God right now for being in my right mind, for having a right mind, for applying the word that was come before us. We had already been prepared on what was going to come. And as I sit, I began to look at myself and I didn't question God because I heard what the pastor said that if God allowed it then it must be so it had to be because I needed to get to another level and the level was in my mind how to go through how when the enemy comes and 
tries to attack my mind and tries to show me things, how I don't have to pay that no mind. I don't have to pay it any attention. But I can keep my mind stayed on the Lord. Tell Not about your... only that, I learned how to be strong. I learned how to be bold. I know how to stand up for myself. I know how to talk back to the enemy. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid to stand up. I'm not afraid to speak up. And I wish the enemy would come on my territory. Hi, Yelabosa. I wish he would come on my territory. I've already been prepared for that as well. If he steps on my territory, I thank God for the teachings that we have. It's important to listen. It's important to apply that which we've heard. You never know when you're going to need it. But the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, will bring it up when you need it. You might can't remember everything at one time. But when, it, when you go through it and the enemy brings it up, the Holy Ghost will work for you if you put it to use. It will work for you. So I praise God. Elder Gail, tell them about your physical healing in your body. Yes. And my physical healing. I came into church last week and it was just about close to the 21 days. So the enemy had already attacked me and my mind. That didn't work. He had tried to do so many things. So he said, well, now I'm going to get you in your body. So when I came in, my right hip went out. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. Every time I tried to take a step, my feet would come out from under me. So I came in with a cane. You better let me use her cane. And I walked in and I sit right there and I said, I can't sit here like this. I'm going to have to get up. But by then, Pastor Tony came and she started talking to me, telling me about the position that I have in me, the healing part. You know, sometimes we can use our healing part and position for everybody else, but we can't use it for ourselves when it comes time because we don't think about that part of it. So she began to prophesy to me and tell me how to use the physician part, the healing part that I have within me. When she told me that, I got up, I walked back and forth, almost running, almost running, because I know the God that I have in me. But sometimes when things come upon us, we forget about that part. But she came and reminded me of the healing, the physician part that God has given me. And I began to walk up and down. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. Not only that, more holy boldness came in me on that part of it. Because I knew after that that there was nothing that the enemy can do to me that God won't allow. Nothing. He can't do anything to me. This 21 days has proved to me and myself who I am in God. And just what he will do for me when the time comes. And I'm saying it again, and I'm saying it bold. I ain't scared of the devil no more. He cannot never come on my territory, ever. Because I have the power to remove him from my place, from my place, from me, from my family, from my church members. I believe it. It works. I know it works. So I thank God for my healing. And I hope each and every one of you got healing. But the best part of all, the healing that I had was in my mind. Hallelujah. In my mind. Come on, Elder Janae. Thank you. Come on and clap your hand. Real quick. Real quickly. I really had got weary 
not of God, but with myself and impatient and my well-doing. I was like, me, me, myself, and I again. I never went through that before, you know? That was the first time I ever went through that about me, focus on me, 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 forget about everybody else. Me, Janae, what about me, Lord? What about me? God said it's not about you. I got weary in my well-doing. I wasn't giving up on God, but I was giving up on myself. Like she said, mine, I was going through a lot because I allowed myself to go through it. I didn't have to because I was focused on me and I took my mind off of Jesus. I took my focus off of the Lord. But you know, God is a keeper. If you're anointed and appointed by God, you are going to be kept. He's going to let you go through the fire because I'm coming out in pure gold. I guess it was a week ago, Apostle. Sunday. Sunday, late last Sunday. 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 Not Sunday, but Sunday I, before. I was in such a high praise with the Lord. I mean, I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know. Mother Harvey came over and... And I just didn't know. I, I went out. I died. I didn't know my heart stopped beating. I didn't know I stopped breathing. Right over there. I didn't know. Do y'all remember that? Let I Sunday? did not know, Apostle. I didn't know I couldn't feel it. All I felt was peace. I had peace. I told the apostle, I had peace. I didn't know. She said, Janae, Janae, Janae. I couldn't even come out. I could hear her voice, but I couldn't come out. And she said it the last time, and I heard her. And I got up. I got up. The Lord resurrected me. She told me, Janae, you lost your post. You were dead. I didn't know. But God. Hallelujah. But Janae, tell them what you told the Lord days before that. I said, Lord, I want to go home. Take me She home. asked the Lord to take her life. I said, Lord, I'm tired. Because I was going through a lot, and it was all of selfish. 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 That's what it was all about. I've been selfish of myself. And I said, Lord, I'm tired. Take me home. And little did I know I was that close to going with the Lord. But God said, Not so. You got too much work to be done. And I thank you, Apostle, for being there for me. But let God use you because I didn't know I was out of a safe. But I thank God for you, Hallelujah. the woman of God. And I give all God the glory in you, Apostle, because Praise you recognized it. I didn't know she called me, said, Janae, you know what happened to you? I said, No. She said, You died. You didn't have a pause. But I didn't have fear. I didn't have fear. But it wasn't your time. It wasn't my time. I just wanted to give you that testimony because I got weary and my well-doing. I said, God, I'm tired. Take me on home. And little did I know, I almost got my request. I almost got my request. But he said, not your time. So that's my testimony. God has resurrected me back. I'm walking the faith walk. I got supernatural power from the Lord. He has given the grace to go on the strength. He said, daughter, your faith is not going to fail you in this season. Hallelujah. He said, it's not going to fail you. You got to come forth in this time. So I'm in my good season again. I'm not weary. I know once I get weary and well doing, I know what to do. The focus and concentrate on the Lord. So continue to pray for me. I'm going to tell y'all, that morning I got up. And the Lord said, miracle signs and wonders. And I prayed all the way to church that Sunday. 
And I said, God, I thank you for the miracle. I thank you for the sign. I thank you for the wonder. And I, I told, I told uh, Helena, I said, I've been hearing that in my spirit. Miracle, signs, wonder. We came in church. And I felt death sitting over there. So I sat in my chair and I began to pray. Shataya, and just watching so I can see what God was doing. And then I went to the bathroom and came up and they said, Janae. And so by the time I went over, she, she said, I can't catch my breath. I can't breathe. Her breath, she like that. Tyra saw it. She witnessed. She took her last breath. And I said, God, I said, God, and I began to quickly. I said, God, I know she, you can't let her go like this in my spirit. And so I looked up for Tyra. And Tyra, I couldn't even see Tyra. And I looked at my mother. I was about to say, call. I was going to say 911. And the Lord said, call her name. He said, call her name. I said, Janae, wake up. Janae, wake up. Janae, wake up now. And she, her breath came in her body. I said, now Janae, stand up. Hallelujah. And she got up. And I took her back there and I laid hands on her. She went through a deliverance. But let me tell you about the, when God calls you on something. And I knew this 21 days were vital. And I called her a week before because I saw it. But I thank God for obedience. And a house that prays as one. Hallelujah. And I thank God that God is a healer. Hallelujah. God is a healer. God is a healer. And he wonders many things happen over these 21 days. The devil came against the house. And the Lord just said, praise him. So right in the middle of our praise, many things happen. Some of you don't understand. That sometimes we prolong praise because God is healing. In the midst of our praise, when our people that know their God begin to praise in the midst, healings happen. Hallelujah. And I believe that we are living in a time that we must be ready at all times and live every day as if it is our last day. And it's not the time to get to know God, it's the time to know Him. It's the time to know Him. Especially the ones that are called by his name and called to fourth run in this hour. God is calling us to holiness. And we must stand on his word. Come on, Jim. Come on, real quick. Thank you, God. I was standing back there and the Lord, he reminded me of a dream that my son had, my youngest son had. It was around the first of the year. And this dream, he asked me, he said, Mama, are you okay? I said, I'm fine, why you ask? He said, I had this crazy dream. And in the dream, he said, it was like you had on a hospital gown. And there was these black birds and they were trying to get at you. They were trying to peck at you. And I just kept showing them away. And when I shoot them away, they came back and tried to peck you again. And I said, just pray. I said, cause I'm well. So, um, five, well, I guess it was about five, six weeks ago, I went um, to, uh, I was referred to a nephrologist. And uh, I went there and they told me to keep my blood pressure, uh, a journal of my blood pressure for five weeks. So when he said it, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be obedient and do what I need to do. And I asked her about my blood pressure readings. She said they were fine. But the enemy likes to strike you with fear to make you accept something because people speak words and if you agree with those words, then it shall be so. But I didn't believe it. I just went on and I was obedient to do what the doctor said. Well, I went back um, this past Friday and he was talking about before I had uh, stage three uh, chronic kidney failure. And I'm like, what? So I said, no. No, no, I can't. I can't have that. And then when I went back, he said, well, your, your, your readings look really well and everything. He said, and uh, everything is fine. And it's like it's stage two chronic kidney failure. And I was like, no, I don't have no kidney failure. But I didn't say it to him because he's a doctor and he got to do what he got to do. 
but I believe in these 21 days, whatever was trying to come, though the weapon might form, it did not prosper. I was feeling so good about, you know, just my life and just how God has blessed me with good health. So I got home and I said I was gonna start exercise and I went around the corner from my house to get on this track and walk. I'm walking, I got my praise music on and just having a good day, a beautiful day in the Lord. All of a sudden something pierced, like hit my arm like a, a tree that when you go back to the doctor, your blood work shall be normal. In the name of Jesus, I decree healing. The devil is alive. We cancel the negative prognosis in the name of Jesus. And we believe the report of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to make it quick. In the 21 days. Apostle just said, make it quick, so I'm going to make it quick. In the 21 days, my wife prayed for me. She prayed and she prayed for me because there was a lot of things trying to attack me simply because I was trying to do the will of God. So all things was trying to attack me. So I said, Lord, I can trust you, but can you trust me? And I thought about it, and God revealed it to me. And sometimes things happen to make you stronger, to make you wiser in the Lord. So all I have to say is trust him, seek him, believe him, and continue to praise him. And he will see you through anything in this world that you may conquer. Amen. Hallelujah. God shut them all down. And Sunday, my ankle, like something happened in the middle of the night from Saturday night to Sunday. And I just woke up and I couldn't walk. Like I crawled to my room because my ankle, my right ankle was in so much pain and I couldn't even walk on it. And so I was pondering like, nah, I'm not going to go to church. But I, I had to press because I knew that was the enemy. So I took some ibuprofen, came here, praised. And I, I even called Apostle, it was all kind of attacks happening. She was telling me, you know, to overcome the rejection from way back when that you still got to wrestle against sometimes. But I did not know that God was going to heal my ankle. Like, I just woke up, everything is fine. Like, I was walking on it, no pain, no nothing. I could not even walk on my ankle from Saturday night to Sunday. And God just healed it just like that. Just like that. I'm going to tell you something. Whenever an unusual attack comes just like that, what we as believers that praise God and confess, we have to activate our faith. It's vital that we move according to this word. And if we move by faith, the devil cannot have a hold on us. He can't, because there's no power than the power of God. And there are times where God will test the reins of our hearts to see if we believe what we profess. He will. Every time I got healed, I got healed in church or getting ready for church. Hallelujah. And I got up and I pressed and every time I got healed, Every time since I've been saved. Hallelujah. And if something stays on you, that means his grace is sufficient. He's giving you what you need to walk it out. We're being tried, but it's okay. Come on. And that's what my testimony is about. You know, you all know I've had many physical healings, miracles in my body confounded many doctors, many attacks on my life. And in this past 21 days, the Lord showed me his true power within me and within this ministry. I came to believe in the power of God 
on a whole nother level. You know, the enemy, since I was a child, I had infirmities. I would get attacks. I saw demons. Demons would physically scratch me, torment me, take me of my sleep. I had out of body experiences. I've been tormented all my life by demons. Wake up in the middle of the night with something choking me. My bed would shake. And, and there was still a little fear in me of darkness. But in this season, the Lord told me, he said, there is no other power but my power. He said, and the Lord said, a lot of people think that the devil is my equal but opposite. He said, I have no equal. He said, I created him. He's a created being. And the Lord showed me. A lot of times, mom was telling me something, something cratic illnesses. She taught about illnesses when you go to the doctor that you have the true physical manifestation of something, but they can't find it on an x-ray. They can't find it on the MRI. You can look like you had a stroke. Your mouth can be turned. You can be limped in your body, but they can't find it in your brain. And she taught about these different attacks that would come and they would call it a stroke. They said I had a stroke. They said I had this. They said I had that, but they couldn't find it. It was demons. It was attacks. It was generational curses. And in this season, the Lord taught me how to turn my own weapon on myself. When my body say one thing, the Lord said, speak my word to it. The Lord said, call it what it is, call it a lie. And, it, it, and sometimes in this past 21 days, there have been such pain inside my legs. But the Lord told me, praise me. And I couldn't dance like I used to dance. But the Lord said, what you can do, do. And I get up there and I sing and I praise and I praise and I praise and I praise and I praise. It's power in a 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 praise. Hallelujah. And Sunday I danced and I danced and I danced and I danced and I can run. And I'm praying for miracles. Hear me. I want you to hear this. Many, many, many people's kidneys are failing because of medication. High blood pressure medication. It damages your kidneys. High blood pressure. That's why we have so many believers that are on dialysis because of the high blood pressure medication so I am praying for everyone that have high blood pressure just stand on your feet hallelujah I'm praying that the Lord thy God will heal and that the doctors will take you off the medication and my prayer my declaration is that your kidneys and your body, your organs will function normally until the doctor takes you off your medication. In the name of Jesus, I apply the blood over you. And I thank you, Father, for going to the root, healing the root out. And we praise you in advance for the miracle. In the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands. That's my declaration. The devil is alive. They're building more kidney clinics because of the, the masses that are coming in due to the kidney failure, the damaging medication. 
And so I'm praying for God to do what he is able to do. Amen. Watch and pray is, is my, my topic. And I'm going to try to go. These are instructions for this hour that the body of Christ is in. So I'm going to go through quickly instruction for this hour. Watch and pray. The enemy is at the gate. Watch and pray. The enemy is at the gate. Okay? I want you to listen. I want to... And when we think about gates, we think about biblically when we think about gates, so many things happen at the gates. The gate of a city is where the power was. And they must be fortified with people who can stand and watch not move okay and so I, before I go into that I'm going to I want you to keep this in your mind as we go through this lesson what's in you fortifies the gate that you stand at what's in you so it's vital that what's in you is solid you have a solid faith your lifestyle matches the word of God because if not, the gate of your soul, nothing is protected within nor without. God is placing people in positions who is able to withstand the enemy at the gate. Outward gate, inward gate. Inward gate fortifies the outward gate. So if your inward man is strengthened, strong, cleansed, and pure, you make the gate. If you have a weak inner man, you weaken the gate. Outward gate and the inward gate. Ears, eyes mouth, touch, see everything about you must line up with God so you can protect your gate inward in whatever position. Some of you say, well, I don't have a position in the church. Well, you have a position in your home. You have children. You have things that God calls us to do what? Cover by prayer and lifestyle. It's very vital that we understand where, what you live on the inside reflects what you do on the outside. They must match. Otherwise, you have a weakened gate, outward and inward. I want you to remember that. Okay, I want you, Prophet Joe, I want you to read Matthew 26, and we're going to go through this. See, why did Jesus say to the disciples to watch and pray look and pray at the same time okay we're going to understand why he told them Matthew 26 starting with verse number one please now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings <laughs> the animated bible Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings that he said to his disciples, you know that after two days is the Passover and the son of man will be delivered up to be crucified. Okay, then, so remember in the beginning, he's telling them, okay, you know, it's coming close that I'm going to be crucified. He told them that. Read. Then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, 
a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant saying, why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. See, they couldn't see in the spirit. They were spiritually blind. Spiritually blind. It's bad when you have spiritually blind people connected to you. Read. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. Uh -huh. But me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Uh -huh. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. Which is the cost for the lowest grade slave. His disciple was willing to betray him for a low grade amount. Read. So from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying to him, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Uh -huh. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the 12 now, as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? See, I want you to hear this thing. Imagine your 12 disciples and, and Jesus saying, When are you going to betray me? They say, Am I going to betray you? Am I going to betray you? Because they didn't know what was in their heart. I want you to remember that. They didn't know what was in their heart. So neither one of them could say, not I, but Peter, the one that did it. Read. He answered and said, he who dipped his hand with me in I the mean, dish. I mean, Judas, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He who dipped his hand with me in the dish uh -huh. will betray me. Mm -hmm. The son of man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? He said to him, you have said it. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Uh -huh. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written. I will all, he say that again. All, then Jesus said to them, mm -hmm. all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. Uh -huh. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Say, say what Peter said again. And Peter answered and said to him, and even, Peter said unto him, 
even if all are made to stumble even if everybody stumbles because of you because of you i will never be i made will to never stumble. be made to what stumble stumble i want you to remember that read jesus said to him assuredly i say to you that this night before the rooster crows you will deny me three times so sometimes we don't know what's in our heart right and Jesus had permission through God to see what was in the heart of his disciples. I want you to remember that. Read. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane and said unto his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. I want you to look at the two. He took Peter with him. He asked most of the disciples to stay back, but he took Peter, the one that was going to deny him, closer. And the two sons of Zebedee. I want you to remember that. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it, is, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh to the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The time has come. The hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto them, Put up again thy sword into this place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In that same hour Jesus said to the multitudes, Are ye come out against, as against a thief with swords and staves to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and he laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets must be fulfilled. And sometimes bad things happen to good people for God's glory. Especially if God called you to be an example. And it's very difficult sometimes for us to be a sacrifice of suffering. Why? 
because we have not guarded our gates. That's why he told them, you know, you got to watch and you got to pray. You got to guard, watch, look, listen, and pray. But most of us can't get outside of ourselves, And we don't have an understanding of what it is to be very watchful. Not just them, but us. Some of us want to look and see what other people are doing, but it's very vital you know what you're doing. It's very important that you know where you are at all times. And God has been working so hard for us to see ourselves. It's vital that we see ourselves because if Jesus came and asked us and say, ask us a question, can you be honest with yourself? Or if somebody come to you and say, you know, do you have a problem with me? Or are you going through something? Can you honestly open your mouth and say, you know, I am going through something. Can you help me? That's very difficult for a lot of us to say, I need help. But I thank God for Jesus that he is our prime example of discipleship. How sometimes it takes people time to see self. He told his disciples. I'm sure he was disappointed with a lot of things that they've done, but he, guess what? He knew that he had to be the prime example of how to move forward, especially in this hour. Because trouble is not coming, it is upon our land. And the church must be a safe place, but a, and a protected, guarded place in the spirit. And so we, it, it's, it takes more than us just standing, being big and, and bad and, and having guns and standing at the doors and standing next. We got to understand what Jesus meant when he said, watch, discern, be sensitive here in the spirit. Because a lot of us are dull in the spirit, but we have a position at the gate. It's vital. And so I know Jesus already knew what was going to happen. And so when Jesus give us, or the Holy Spirit give us instructions, it is for us, not for him. He's helping us. And so if he tells you to go in the church and, and pray, for seven hours. He don't need us because he does the work, but he does need us. And it's very important that we are able to obey God at all costs. That's when he said, can you lift, put your cross, lift your cross, carry your cross and follow him? He said, can you keep your hands to the plow and not look back? And so he's, he allow us to go through trials and tribulations to test our faith so that we will know what our weaknesses are. He knew it. He told all the other disciples to stand, but the one that was going to deny him, he said, come with me. Because he knew in the end, he knew that P Peter had potential. And he also knew that Judas was going to betray him. But did he t treat Judas different? No. He didn't. He understands that some things that I've got to go through, I've got to go through. And sometimes enemies are called to me. He understood that this enemy is called to me. This enemy is fulfilling scripture. It's fulfilling the will of God. It's to push me and get me to where I need to be. And Jesus said, take this cup from me, but not thine will, my will, but thine will be done. Jesus, I'm sure some of us, but you telling me you want me to, to be over these people. They don't like me. See, this is how we will be. They don't like me. They talk about me. They, but disciple them. Because some people are only here for a season. Judas was with Jesus for a season. And so God wants us to be like Jesus. A 
able to be affected and love our enemy. Love our enemy. And we must be able to see potential. Potential. Potential in the ones that are following. But they had to learn how to guard the gate. Inward gate is more important than your outward position. The inward man makes the outward positions. But we want the outward and forget about the inward. No, you can't be like that even in this hour. You got to have inward. As a matter of fact, some people don't, that don't look the part and don't act like the part to you, but they have it. They have it. Amen. Because I'm sure the disciples looked at Peter and was like, he ain't, he's not going to be nothing. He's not going to be nothing because he denied Jesus. But he was the one that walked on the water. He the one that said, bid me to come. I'll come. You speak. He the one had faith in him. Unlike the others. Yes. Because we are um, a house of leaders, um, a question just came to me. Uh -huh. And this is, this will help me. Uh, give me some examples um, of how to love your enemies or what God expects out of us um, loving our enemies. Acting like it never happened. Okay. When they offend you, violate, forgive, as if it never happened. Okay. But it's very hard for us to do that because we, other offenses are in it or are still unresolved in us. So when a new offense comes, it just adds on. So a lot of times the present issues is because the past have not been healed. So it's very difficult for anybody to forgive today when they hold on to yesterday. Difficult. That's why some people say, I don't know why it's hard for me. Well, because you still got that old stuff. That old stuff have power. It's like a magnet if you will. When you have unresolved issues that have not been healed, it's a magnet to your present. It pulls you back every time something happens. And so a lot of people have to look back and forgive everybody from yesterday because the people today are catching it. And that's one of the reasons why it's very difficult for us. But once we heal from our past hurt, Pat, unresolved issue, unmet needs, unhealed hurt, all that unstuff. We let it go to people today we can forgive. So it, that's why I say you act like it don't happen, but if it's something still in your soul, unresolved, it's very difficult. But to love them, embrace them, act like they never happened. Amen. You won't feel it. And we were talking about that in my office today, about forgiveness, how a lot of times there was, we talked about how, I must say, people came against me close. And they watched me walk in forgiveness. And, and most of the time, the people that were connected to me was very difficult for them to forgive. And the offense was against me. And so I know I had to be the example of forgiveness to everybody because if I start acting ugly, everybody around me will be ugly and we'll have an ugly, fleshly church. Amen. Because sheep do follow the leader. If you have a bitter leader, you'll have bitter sheep. If you have an angry leader, you'll have angry sheep. If you have a forgiving, loving leader, you have loving, you should have loving sheep, or you'll be able to look at your pastor and say, they love, they forgive. We got to follow them. So the sheep follows the leaders. That's why I stay on leaders the way I do. And it's vital. So is that good enough? Okay. 
Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. So that's the one thing that they felt they could come. Let's go to the paper. I'm going to ask you to read the rest of that in your time for the sake of, of time. Gates. Gates is a portal, a portal. A portal is a doorway, gate, or entrance. It's the means through which one thing passes from one place to another. In order for something to pass from one place to the next, there are laws at work regulating its action. Okay, I'm going to take you deeply into that. If you have an offense, it becomes a law and it regulates everything today to answer your question. And so if I have anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy, they are laws within me. I keep it. That means I act like it. I talk like it. I walk like it, I dress like it, it becomes a law in me, and it regulates my gates. So the inward works outward. And if something is able to pass through, break through a barrier, which the Holy Ghost should be the one that's able to break through barriers and come and bring us to forgiveness or repentance, guess what? It's a, that's a lawful gate. But we allow unlawful things to stay in our hearts, and we do what? Protect ourselves. And how about somebody that is jealous or insecure or angry protect themselves? How do we protect ourselves? Angry people protect themselves so what? Why? Because someone hurt them. So they're going to make sure that no one repeats the past. It's a law. So if I'm like that, then I'm going to say, I was talked down to, so I'm not going to allow anyone to talk down to me today. That's a law. I was hurt by a best friend, so I'm not going to have no friends. It becomes a law inside of you. Something that you made up in your mind to keep. That's why we can't break our laws until we repent. Otherwise, you are keeper of your own soul. And your own gate is regulated by your emotions, your feelings. Or what's on the out, what's at face value. It has no spiritual depth. So a portal is a doorway, as I said, gate or an entrance. It's the means through which one thing passes from one place to another in order for something to pass from one place outward to the next, there are laws at work regulating. So offenses regulate. Fear regulates. Say, you're supposed to be afraid. That you're not supposed to let anybody do this to you. Watch them. Watch how they talk. Look how they look. You become paranoid. Regulation by unhealthy seeds a gate so with two gates outward inward the hebrew words for possess means to control to have power over or to have authority over so when you have a law in you that is being kept guess what happened it has authority and it possesses you it rules you what did it mean for Abraham to have authority over the gates of the enemy? Gates are symbolic of spiritual power and authority. Gates speak of rule. Gates also speak of the place of counsel. Proverbs talk about gates in a number of passages referring to that place where people would sit to receive counsel or advice from the elders in the gate. So imagine if the elders at the gates are contaminated, how would they counsel be? contaminated. Those who sat in the gates were people who knew counsel and who understand laws and regulations. 
spiritual portals are who we are. They are the eternal actions of our lives. People who continue to walk in faith, love, peace, joy, and righteousness become gateways for the kingdom of God to manifest. So whenever we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, we are a gateway or a portal for the Holy Spirit to flow through us. And there's no hindrance at the gate of our heart. There's nothing hindering our sight. But whenever you have things that are in you that are not dealt with, you is going to hinder your sight, your gates. These kinds of repetitive actions will always alter the spiritual climate around you. Irritation in your, in your city and state. It regulates who we are inwardly regulates the spiritual realm. High places, principalities, power. Otherwise, we'll be a portal for unclean spirits to flow through us. And you speak in tongue. How many of you know that you can You can speak in tongue and be a portal for a demonic power? If you have unresolved issues, hate, anger, unforgiveness, you are a portal. For unclean spirits. So if we are a church that's supposed to have a clean flow, poured off from heaven to flow, and we contaminated, what are we coming, what's coming through us? Strange fire. Strange fire. So that's why our city and our state and our regions are not affected because we are not infected with the Holy Ghost. We must possess the spirit of God to possess the region. How can we keep a supernatural high gate? We can't even keep the gate of our soul. How? What can flow through you? Protect your gate. Spiritual gates and doors are the result of occupancy. Occupancy. The Holy Ghost occupies or other things occupy. They are the life of the Spirit occupying the hearts and minds of his people. The portals of heavens are from within. Hear me. The portals from heaven are from within, not from without, because it, it's got to be in us to flow out of us. It has to be real in us and evident in us that to connect to God. Why? The Bible said God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Portal. Supernatural. Flow. So if we have unclean spirits, them that worship the devil worship him and the lie. The portals of heaven are from within, not from without. Our spiritual, life con our spiritual life connects us to God and his promises. Our spiritual life connects us to God and his promises. Our spiritual life connects us to God and his promises. Our guarantee when we walk upright before him. It's a guarantee. You don't have to go on 21 days of prayer to, to, to bring his promise to you. That's one thing a believer has the assurance of. If you are walking upright before God, you don't have to pray for it to come. You wait on it. But it shows a lack of faith when God spoke to you and said, I'm going to heal your body, and you go on 321 days fast to get your healing. That sounds like doubt. You can move to the next thing. It's done. But obedience keeps the promise come in time and season. No hindrance, no distraction. We are the connection from heaven to earth. Satan's plans will not overwhelm you. When you are portal from heaven, you connected to power, you connected to the Holy Ghost. There's no way the devil can overwhelm you. How in the world can the devil overwhelm you when you are connected to a heavenly portal? 
How in the world can that devil dictate to you when you have life in you? So whenever we have, like Elder Janae said, she took her eyes off of God and put it on herself. She gave the example. That's why I wanted her to come. It's vital for believers to keep your eyes on the prize, on the high call. We got to press towards the mark. It's vital because anytime you can be cute and filled with the Holy Ghost, have all kind of gifts and anointings, and take your eyes off of God for five minutes can cost you. I'm going to say that again. You can be cute and bad, sing, preach, do everything well, take your eyes off the Holy Ghost for five minutes. And it can alter your life. Five minutes, two minutes, a second for me. Hallelujah. And I say a second because I believe in guarding myself. Second by second. Moment by moment. I believe in guarding myself in the realm of the spirit. Because sometimes believers can be tricked. Tricked real good. Real good. Amen. Look at the wrong thing. Too long. You can get in some big trouble. God has promised that his plan will be established in your life. The devil may have may plan things against you, but they will not prosper. That's what the Bible said. They can come, but it can't prosper. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. He is continually planning to attack you and planning to destroy you, but his plans will come to naught if you are full of the word of God and remain in prayer. But being full of the word of God is not sinning and reading. Being full of the word of God is not sinning, sin, sin, and reading your Bible all day. You can read 24-7 and full of sin and be a liar, and that word won't do what? Convict you. This Bible must convict you. This Bible must be the thing that process you. The word of God must be the thing that regulates your mind. The word. Not the word that come out of somebody's mouth. I want the word of God to regulate me first. But some of us don't read it here, so we want to read it by ear. Somebody give me a prophecy. Somebody give me a prophecy. I want somebody to prophesy to me. Read the word. It will prophesy you right up out of sin. How in the devil can't stand against it. When you are ready to attack the gate of your enemy, and sometimes it's within you, God will give you strength for the battles to defeat yourself by the Holy Ghost. Holly, you ever been in? See, y'all ain't been in no fight when you got to use the Holy Ghost against yourself. When you have to believe, like, like Elder Gail said, I, she had to believe in the Word of God, and she put the Word on herself. Y'all know about that. Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Ghost power means. Having this word. Besides being part of a city's protection against invaders, city gates were places of central activity in biblical time. It was the city gates that important business transactions were made, court was convened, and public announcements were heralded. Imagine if there's Torah people there. It is, it is natural that the Bible frequently speaks of sitting in the gate or of the activities that took place at the gate. In Proverbs 1, wisdom is personified. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. In the gateways of the city, she makes her speech. What about when you, your mind is speaking to yourself? The gates are not covered. And you hear noise, chaos, talk, doubt in your gates. Then, and you can't protect yourself with the word of God. What happens when that happens? I'm going to tell you something. I can't say it any. When you are being attacked like that, you have to be real with God. 
And you have to be real with yourself. And you got to want to be delivered at 100%. Got to want it. If you want to be delivered 100% in your heart, you are convinced and fully persuaded that God, I want to be healed. I'm going to allow you to heal me. That's the only way you can use the word on yourself. Otherwise, if you try to use the word on yourself and you 50% want it, you'll be 50% delivered all the time. You got to want it over your battle. Otherwise, you still stay on there. You be on that seesaw. T, up, down, up, down. And then you don't have to talk about it. When somebody is convinced, you have to say, I'm going to be delivered. God is going to you can You're convincing yourself at that point. Because when I'm convinced with something, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to show you better than I can talk. Talk is cheap. But when you can get convinced in your heart that you're going to be delivered, you're going to run the race. And then you're on to something else. Because that's not an issue anymore. You made up your mind. When you make up your mind, you don't have to talk about something. It's made up. But you keep talking about it. Oh, I'm going to do I'm going to do I'm going to You're not convinced. But when you make up your mind, my God, you'll see somebody warn Jesus. To spread her words to the maximum number of people, wisdom took the gates. The first mention of a city gate is found in Genesis 19. It was at the gate of Sodom that Abraham, nephew Lot, greeted the angelic visitors to this city. Lot was there with other leading men of the city, either discussing the day's issues or engaging in important civic business. And the law of Moses, parents of a rebellious son, were told to bring him at the city gate. Why? Because the leaders and people who really should possess power were at the gate. Well, the elders will examine the evidence and pass judgment. So imagine, imagine if you have a judgmental person at the gate. Trouble at the gate. This affirms that the city gate was central to community action. Another important example is found in the book of Ruth. Boaz officially claimed the position of kinsman redeemer by meeting with the city elders at the gate of Bethlehem. There the legal matters related to his marriage to Ruth were settled at the gate. As Israel combated the Philistine, the priest Eli waited at the city gate for news regarding the ark and to hear how his sons fared in battle at the gate. When King David ruled Israel, he stood before his troops to give instructions from the city gate. After his son Absalom died, David mourned but eventually returned to the city gate along with his people. The king's appearance at the gate signaled that the mourning was over. Some people see some people at the gate and be like, oh my God, they at the door, they so mean, they so nasty. Oh my God, they don't have no love flowing they at the gate you know people should never walk in these doors nowhere and somebody contaminates at the gate hallelujah it's vital even when the people come through the door it's very important how we handle even when we sit in them because it is a gate and you can offend and violate at the gate and mess up the person hear me if your inward gate is off, you'll be off at the gate. It's vital. And the enemy is trying everything to offend the people, anything and everything he can possibly get through. And sometimes it's very simple. But we have to be so keen in the spirit. doesn't mean that we're pacifying. Sometimes God says, okay, you're at the gate. It's a very vital place. You're standing at the door or you're in position. Whatever your gate of authority Okay, it's not even at the door. It's whatever your position of authority is. It's very vital that we handle it sensitively. Very vital. Because one thing, one word can offset a believer, a, a new believer, or, or somebody that's working through things. And sometimes we look at people and say, well, you know, they're too old for this. But sometimes they just realize that they had an issue. They may be 50, 60, 70, 80, and they just realized that they had an issue for 60 years. 
And so it is not how long they've been saved. It's sometimes they are in a safe place to heal. And if, if they're in a safe place to heal, we have to be sensitive dealing with the people who are healing. Or you will offend them and their gates will be fortified with hurt. See, we protect, when we protect our gate, we help others protect them. And sometimes we have to work so they can do what? Bring down their gate. Jesus, help us. The city gate was important to other ancient cultures as well. Because Esther 2 records that some of the king's servants plotted at the king's gate to murder him. Mordecai, a leading Jew in Persia, heard the plot and reported it to Esther, who gave the news to the king. The Persian court officials were identified as being at the king's gate. To control the gates of one's enemies was to conquer their city. Part of Abraham's blessing from the Lord was the promise that your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemy. But if we don't possess our gate, here. Guess what will happen? Our children will be just like us. Our fallen, weak state. It's a bad thing to look at your children and see that they're going through the same thing you went through in your fallen state. But it's a good thing when you are fully persuaded and you see them in a bad place, but you're in a place that you should be in. Vital. Very. But there are also times and seasons where we have to swallow and work to help them come through that place. And it's bad when we're both working at the same time. I'm going to say that again. If you're half persuaded and you look at your child and you see they're in real trouble and you, you know you have, you're dealing with issues, it's, it's harder when you're working to get yourself clear in them too, when you realize all of the mistakes you made in your past. But you fortify your gates when you get it right. When you look at it and say, that was me, that was me, I've done that, but I want to close this door. You can't be, a... you can't be a lukewarm believer and think you're going to defeat the powers that's ruling your seat. You can't. You're going to have to have some Holy Ghost power to come against these powers that are attacking your sea. True power in this day. The news is forever full of children killing their parents. They have no sensitivity for life, no respect for it. The Persian court official were identified as being at the king's gate. To control the gates of one's enemy was to conquer their city. Part of Abraham's blessing from the Lord was the promise that your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemy. And that's an that's a awesome promise when we know we're positioned and we, the Lord tells us your children will possess it too. When Jesus promised to build his church, he said the gates of hell, Hades, will not overcome it. An understanding of biblical implications of gates helps us interpret Jesus' word. Since a gate was a place where rulers met and counsel was given, Jesus was saying that all the evil plans of Satan himself would never defeat the church. But you must watch, you must see it and pray. You got to see for real in the spirit. It's vital that you're able to see in the spirit. Vital. We had an incident where I was praying in the church and there was an individual that stopped at the church, was very, very, very angry with me, it was a man. And at the time he walked in the church, this was the other day and I was walking, I was praying and me, Elder Adrian, Andrea, uh, Pastor Sean was on the piano playing. Helena was here, and I was praying, in the place of worship, and 
I walk, I've been praying for maybe like 30 minutes at that time. And then as I was walking my head, I felt something evil come in to church. And I shunned the But the Lord said, continue to pray. And I kind of eased my eye over like this because he said, don't look all the way up. Just look so I eased and I saw who was at the door. And I continued to pray. Pastor Sean continued to pray. And he started praying in the spirit. And Helena and, and Andrea. And um, we all start praying in the Holy Ghost. Because the Lord had given me instructions before I left. And he said, this and this and that will be. And so I said, okay, God. And so thank God for this sensitivity to be able to pray. Because of you never know what's going to happen in your day's time. And you've got to know how to speak, how to deal, how to comfort, how to move in the spirit. Because if one off thing would have come out of my mouth, it would have altered everything and would have been a dangerous situation for all of us. And so we must understand that as things go on, you, you may save the lives of people connected to you. And you can also endanger them with your mouth. Some of us are endangered because of we can't control our mouth or our attitude, and we offset everything. You got to guard your gate. You got to guard. When Jesus promised to build his church, he said the gates of Hades will now overcome it. An understanding of the biblical implication of gates help us interpret Jesus' words. Since a gate was a place where rulers met and counsel was given, Jesus was saying that all the evil plans of Satan himself would never defeat the church, but you still must watch and pray. Guarding our doors and gates are extremely important. How we take in information and process it is how things enter through the doors and the gates of our soul. Our five senses are the doors and gates that allow information to enter. It is important to feed the spirit, not the flesh, so we can effectively guard our borders outwardly and inwardly. Praise God, for he is the protector of our spirit. Our body and soul have gates that the enemy can and will attack. However, Jesus is our provision. He paid the price, taking the sins of the world for our redemption. He came to show mankind the way, provided us access to God and the ability to walk in his power and victory. We have access. Imagine if you have an open heaven and portal from here to there and it's open. That's what we need. We need a divine connection. It's more important to have one here than here. You have to have one here first and the right connection will come here. We need a divine connection. He came to show mankind a way, provided us access to God and the ability to walk in his power and victory. His sacrifice formed a gate so that we can enter into the kingdom. There is only one gate or door to reach the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. When you guard your mind, you guard your gates in the Spirit. Stand on your feet. All of us are in a process in one way or another. And I want to say this. If you are connected to someone that does not guard their gates, especially their words, their mouth, their attitude, and you're connected to them, that's a bad connection and your gates will be weakened why because you're connected to something weak connection you know when you plug in um, 
something through a circuit and there's weak currency coming through it, it's a weakness in the TV. It'll be the weakness in the appliance or whatever. You can feel it. And so some of us have bad connections. Some of us. And we must be fully persuaded in this hour. We have to settle things in our heart. Settle things in your mind. It doesn't matter if they come up 70 times a day. Settle it. Don't carry it. That's why the Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Because if you go to bed angry or you go to bed with something unsettled and you let it go down upon your wrath, guess what? Several things happen. You don't want to die in your sleep with unforgiveness, number one. Number two is building weak gates. You'll become weak. You ever held something long enough that one day you're just out of control with it? Your gates are no longer fortified. And you have no control over yourself. You have no control over your thoughts. You have no control over your feelings. You have no control over your mouth. There's, you, you just got to move and do something. When you get moved and angry, you feel like you have to retaliate. That means you have a weakened gate. You, you have no control. And if you know that you, you need your gates to be fortified by the Holy Ghost, come to the altar. When you have a weakened gate, guess what? You have no discernment. Because it blocks your discernment. It blocks your sensitivity to God. You can't see, you can't feel, you can't hear, you can't. And you're not able to be effective. How do I know I'm not effective? You're not effective in ministry. You're weakened, your stands is weakened, your prayer life, reading your Bible. You have a gate system that is broken. But how many of you know the Holy Ghost? I love this church for many reasons, but for one, I'm going to speak on today is because if any of us leaders, whoever, feel like there may be a question somewhere, they come to the altar, even if they feel like, oh, let me just in case. So everybody that comes is not because they in full blown. It's because, oh, let me, let me just, let me get there because I do get moved sometimes. And, but I'm going to cover that gate. I'm going to come to the altar. I'm going to cover myself. I'm going to cover that gate because I feel a little something sometimes. And I thank God for that. Because we want to be a keeper of our gates. And we want to be a portal from heaven to this earth. We want the power of God to flow from heaven down to earth. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, right now, we just present our bodies. We present our hearts. We present our mind. We present ourselves to you, O oh God. And Father, first, we want to repent. We want to repent for holding things. We know that holding things causes a breakdown, oh God, in our soul, in our mind. So, Father, we repent, and right now we forgive everybody that offend us. We forgive everyone that hurt us. And, Father, we let the past go. Father, we place the past in your hand. And, Father, this day we want to move forward, and we ask that you, Holy Spirit, that you will fortify our gates, that you will fortify our mind, that you will fortify our soul and our spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. So Father, right now, we thank you, O oh God, that you will show us the thing that we need to correct. We ask that you will show us the wrongs that, so that we can make them right. And Father, we give you praise for a fresh anointing on this altar, O oh God. Because we confess our sin. We confess our weaknesses unto you, O oh God. And we thank you for anointing us, O oh God. That we will walk away changed. In the name of Jesus. 
We thank you, O oh God, that we will not wrestle with one another because we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We know that our fight is against the enemy and the enemy is in us. We understand that, Father, if we are weak, that the enemy has an open door to attack us. So right now, Father, we shut the door to the enemy. Come on, shut the door. We shut the door to the enemy. We apply the blood over every demonic door, over every demonic portal that we have opened. We apply the blood of Jesus upon every door in our gates. Right now, we apply the blood over ourselves in the name of Jesus. And Father, we decree that no weapon which has been formed against us shall prosper. Though it formed, it will not prosper in Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, shout aloud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.